Uh, Emily, as we know, you're a student of the uh, Kabbalah Centre yourself and uh, knew Karen personally. Uh, break us down. Tell us, what was she like? You know, I have to say she was a, a very inspirational woman, I mean, to me, and I didn't even really get to know her personally so well until after I, I came to Israel. I've been studying a long time. I studied at the Kabbalah Center in New York, which brought me to, to Israel originally back in 2007. So I would say without even the knowledge of learning about Kabbalah, I wouldn't be living in Israel right now. Really, that's, that, that's the truth. It's something, it's knowledge and information that, that touched me personally on such a, a deep way. And and Karen, being a woman, she was really the powerhouse behind her her late husband, Rob Berg, who passed away in, in uh, 2013. But really, so much of what Kabbalah is about is this time of the woman, this time of what's called Malchut, according to uh, the Sfirot, which is basically the different levels of layers of consciousness as it kind of trickles down to us here in the, in the realm in which we live. So she really was an inspiration. She traveled the world. She, she spoke to so many people. And in, in just a short amount of time, really a matter of a couple of decades from when she and her husband established the Worldwide Kabbalah Center, they were able to translate the Zohar, which was a, a book that no one even knew about until about 20 years ago, except for learned rabbis and scholars. And because of that, now this Zohar is translated into Hebrew, into English, into all over lang all over the world, languages that, that people could understand and delve into the information and the mysteries of bringing light to the world at this uh, critical juncture in, in the world that we're living in right now. As we're seeing, there's a lot of darkness, but there's also an opportunity to use that darkness to reveal great light and to make a, a, a galactic shift everywhere. So, Emily, I guess that's uh, what we were just talking about then with the rabbi, really that connection there between Kabbalah uh, and Tisha B'Av. That's true, and it's funny. The Zohar says, and I've learned a lot, you know, from my teachers, they often say, Kabbalists say that the Messiah will be born on Tisha B'Av. You know, from the most negative day of the year, again, is where there's like a shortcut for positive energy to, to come in. Because if you think about a room, this room is dark. I turned on the light. You could even light a candle, and this room will light up. Darkness only exists when there's a lack of light, but the smallest amount of light could literally light up a room, like this room that I'm sitting in that was dark mm -hmm. two seconds ago.